just shall live by faith. Amen. Amen. That's what the Bible says. The just shall live by his faith, is what it actually says. And we got to live by faith and know what we believe. Amen. It's not just what we think, it's what we believe and know to be about God and about what he wants to do in our life. Amen. 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 Turn, if you will, in your Bible to the book of Mark. As you're turning, let me say, that faith that we have together, the faith in our walk brings our, our lives together. When we believe in one God, that he is our Father, guess what? That makes us brothers and sisters. And so I appreciate the works that we do together. I just want to tell you that as the Abundant Love Church of God, you're you're part of something that's a last day's movement of that faith in the world. You're a part of the church of God that has over 7 million members in the world. At last count, it's 176 countries in which the church of God, people of like-minded faith, just like you and me, we may not speak the same language, we may not have the same skin color, we may not have the same heritage and roots, but we believe the same thing. And you're a part of that group. 16,000 here in Indiana. And 100 churches that you're a part of that fellowship called the Church of God. And together, this, this group of churches and people who believe the same way, and you're doing great things. Every time you pay your tithe to the church, you're also helping the cause of world missions around the globe. You're helping to be a part. Those of you who, who give in the, world, in the home missions area, you're part of church planting last week. We saw a new church, a Hispanic church up in Logansport, 160 people came into the Church of God last week and joined our fellowship. It became the 100th church that we have in the fellowship. And you're part of that. Every time you give a tithe, every time you give a light missions gift, or however, you're part of it. So we praise God for the partnership that flows from this church. And we know it, it is, is a result of everyone's work, but God also flows through your pastor. Pastor Ted Kahn and his other by Holly. Their leadership. God works through leaders. And you have rallied in him. You have seen in them the truths of a man of God. The Bible says that Jesus gave gifts to the church. He gave pastors, apostles, teachers, evangelists. And your pastors a gift. He and Holly are gifts to you. And I appreciate the way you support them. You appreciate them. And it's, it is evident that there is a great unity here. And uh, Pastor, I just want to say I appreciate it. I appreciate your friendship, appreciate your commitment to the cause of God. I appreciate all that, that God is doing through this church. Mark chapter 10. I didn't tell you the verse chapter yet. Did I? Mark chapter 10. To be honest, we got struggled with the message this morning. And when I saw walked in and saw all these young people, the Lord just confirmed it in my spirit that we should look at Mark chapter 10. Mark 10, verse 17. <clears throat> you know, have to excuse my voice this morning. I'm a little, got some congestion that I'm finding, so uh, just bear with me if I have to just stop at some point. You know, God's answered my prayer. My clock has stopped working. My watch is not working. <coughs> There's no clock on the back wall. So this is the preacher's best day. Yeah. <laughs> but he has no idea of the time, so... Uh, seriously, we'll, we'll try to get we'll get going here. Mark chapter 10, verse 17. Now, as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And so Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one who is good but one, and that is God. Right. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he answered and said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. And then Jesus, looking at him, loved him. And said to him, One thing you 
lack. One thing you lack. Go your way, sell whatever you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. But he was sad at this word, and went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Now this guy, we see him, he, he's young, he's probably tall, dark, and handsome, and you already know I don't like that. <laughs> he probably got a full head of hair, at least a pastor I have that you know, he, But he, he's, he's young, he's, he's played the game well, I mean, he, he, uh, he has, uh, his law firm has boomed, he wears Ralph Lauren exclusively three-button tailored suits, he, he wears those soft Italian leather loafers. I mean, he, he lives in a, a, in a suite on the top floor of the overlooking the city in which he's heavily invested, uh, where he, he dashes around in his custom Beamer. He's just, uh, his name is Power. His assets are invested. His credit is gold. You've got problems. He's got solutions. You've got questions. He's got answers. You've got problems or a need for a favor. He's got connections. I mean, this guy, he lives like he flies. He's first class. He's, he's just amazing. And uh, uh, Matthew calls him young. Mark calls him wealthy. And Luke calls him the boss. We know him as who? The rich young ruler in our story. We see now this guy has got it all together and everything seems to be going his way, but yet we find him here on this day in this in this true life story. I, I like to say that about the Bible. It's not just it's not a story, it's a true story. Yes. It's a true life story. Yes. And the Lord spoke in parables sometimes and he gave illustrations through parables. But this was a true story. Yes. This really happened. And here we, we find in our story he comes with some questions. He's, he's got a real sincere need to speak to Jesus. He, he has seen something in Jesus and he comes without pretense. Can I tell you, if we're going to get anything from the Lord, we've got to get off our high horse. We got to come down off our pretense and, and realize he he comes running. He's earnest. You know, I I, wanna, I I was so blessed by you, brother, when in the song service you just said I, I just got to pray. You know, we earnest about it. We, we got to be real about it. Amen. I love the, the the name of your men's group, Brave Hearts. Now you eat at Denny's. I don't know how brave that is. But I don't think that's real. That's real courage to eat at Denny's. I don't know. Uh, but the brain hearts, you know, and I, and I saw that. I saw as soon as the brother came down, the other brothers came right around him. That man, that's wonderful. Can I tell you, a church with strong men is a good church. Amen. Where there are strong spiritual men with their hands lifted up and surrender unto God, can I tell you, I just am blessed when I walk into a church yeah. where there are strong men. Grouping at the door with a handshake and a hug and praying and lifting up their hands. Women, we got to lift up our men. we got to pray that God just keeps them strong in the Lord. And, uh, so he comes earnestly. He, he, he comes running to the altar, if you will. God, help us to come earnestly. And he comes humbly. He, here he is. He, he kneels. The Bible says he, he knelt down before the Lord. Now, uh, he, 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 he comes earnestly. He's obviously he's young, but yet he's, he's obviously wise beyond his years because of the fact that he's a ruler. The Bible says, or indicates, uh, and Josephus is in, in his antiquities, lets us know that you can't be younger than 30 years old in order to be a ruler. So he's he's probably about the same age as Jesus. He's realized that there's something missing in his life. Can I tell you, this man had it all. He had everything going for him, but yet he knows there's something not right. There's something missing. There's a piece of the puzzle gone. There's a there's a part, a link that is missing to what's going on. He's not fulfilled. He, he's got it all, but yet he's joyous. He's not experiencing life and abundantly. He, he comes here in verse 17. He's unashamed. He's, he's earnest and he's humble. He's sincere. He's laid aside the grandeur of his position and his title, and he's he's kneeling before the Lord. Now, it was an ancient custom for people in the Middle East to kneel, but it never was a custom for a ruler to kneel down before a peasant. 
before somebody of this low estate. But he had seen something in Jesus. Oh, can I tell you? When you believe in Jesus. Carl was singing about, I believe in Jesus. When you know him, you realize there's something there's something about the truth. And he bows his knee. Can I tell you? If you're going to receive from the Lord today or any day, you have got to come humbly before the yeah. throne of grace to find your help in the time of need. We can't come to him saying, Lord, I'm glad I'm not like so-and-so. Lord, I'm glad I didn't do that. I'm not as bad as he, he is, or I'm not as bad as she is. No, can I tell you, that's not the way to get anywhere to the Lord. Instead, the Bible said, if my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. We've got to come down. Oh, can I tell you, the Bible says, go down to Jerusalem. You've got to get off the high mountain of the temple and go down to where you will meet the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. So he kneels down. He bends his knee. God help us to we humble ourselves in the presence of the Lord. And his question, listen. He says, good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now you know, when you approach the Lord, you know, he, he comes in and as Carl was saying a minute ago, we, when we walk through the doors, it's such a good feeling. It's good to be greeted by people. And Pastor, I commend just the, the feeling of the church. But that's not the good that we're talking about. When, we, when, the, when, the, when the young man says, good master, when you come into the presence of the Almighty, you can't help but recognize His goodness. Yes. The Bible says, God is good. All the time. Hey, God <laughs> is good. He, he's not good one day and bad the next. He's not good yes last year. And, and uh, he's just good. God is good. The Bible says God is love. Yes. God is good and God is faithful. And God is, but when he comes and he says, oh, good master, can I tell you? Moses understood it in Exodus chapter 33 when, when God put his hand on the cleft of the rock and he said, I'll make all my goodness pass before you, Moses. And the Bible says he removed his hand and surely Moses saw just the hinder parts of God in all of his goodness and his glory. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalms 34, he's abundant in goodness. Psalms 31 said, oh, how great is his goodness. Psalms 34 says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Have you tasted of him? If you've been in his presence just a moment, you realize just how good God really is. Amen. He says, good master, what must I do to inherit your life? Can I tell you? Young or old, black or white, rich or poor, it does not matter. Sooner or later, eternal life becomes a concern to every person. Because, you see, nobody wants to talk about death. We don't want to die. I mean, death death is, is desired only to be avoided. That's all we want to do. We want to avoid death. You know, we, 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 uh, death is feared. And as wealthy as he was, and as advantage, uh, the advantages that he had had, and the, and, the, and the status that he had acquired, and the goods that he had acquired, still something's missing. And he realizes that his own, regardless of how high and great and mighty he is, there is something that he cannot deal with, and that is his own mortality, his own death. He had come to the right place. So when he said, Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Then okay, he had come to the right place. He had come to the right source. Are you with me this morning? Amen. He had come to the right place because Psalm 36, 9 says, Jesus is the fountain of life. Yes. John 6, 48, he said, I am the bread of life, but let no man hunger. If you're hunger, come unto me and eat. John 7, 38, he said, I am the well of living water. He's come to the right place. But he wants to know about life because the Bible says in John 10 that he is the, the giver of eternal life. But the Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 4, in and him was life. And the life was the life of man. Oh, he, he knows about life. When you, when you want to know about eternal life, he's come to the right place. Because he said, I am the resurrection and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. If you want to know life, access. He's the author of life. And John said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What can I tell you? If you need to know about life, he's come to the right place. Because Jesus said, I have come that you might have life. And that 
I want you to be serious back there, young people. This is for you today. Yeah. God's wanting to speak to some of you. Talk to him. I have to listen to him. Some of you act like you don't even know what's going on and you're not even here. You need to get into service because the Lord's wanting to speak to some of you. I believe that. When I saw you, the Lord quickened my spirit that he's wanting to speak to some of you about what God's wanting to do for your life. He's not going to tell you, this guy in this service, this guy in this, in this story, he was convicted. He was convicted. He knew God. He saw God. He knew He was good. He was convicted. That means He felt it in His heart. But you know what? He wasn't converted. Mm. Oh, He was convicted all right. He felt it. You're feeling it here today. You can't, you can't be in the presence, in the Shekinah glory, manifest presence of Almighty God that we have in this house today and not know Him. And not feel him and not sense him and know that he's here. I'm not talking about just a little goosebumps on the back of your head. But I'm talking about the power of the living Lord moving in this place. Young people, don't tune me out today. Don't get mad at me. Don't turn me out. Don't turn me off. Listen. Jesus is the author and the finisher of life. The Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Behold, I am he that have the keys of death and hell, and behold, am alive forevermore. Yes. That's the Lord we're talking about. Yes. He's got the keys of death, hell, and the grave, and he's got the keys to your life. Yes. Amen. And that makeover I was talking about is what Jesus wanted to bring this man. He wanted to bring this 35-year-old rich young ruler. He wanted to change his life. Yes. He wanted to ruin his life. He wanted to, he wanted to make his life complete. Yes. And he was convicted about it. But sorrowfully, you know, if I ever get to the end of the sermon, he was convicted but not converted. And so the Lord looks at him. We've heard the boy's question. We've heard the young man's question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? He, he's, he's worried about this thing. Brother Joe, if I understand you just lost a son, Joey, your brother, and you're all up here singing the gospel. Man, I, I just praise the Lord for you, brother. Amen. I, I don't know where your wife is, but I'm just telling you, God is good. And they know first and foremost how a young man can be taken out. And I don't know the circumstances, I don't know anything about it, but I know there's there's been a there's been a, a terrible day in that home. Don't you think it can happen to any of us? Oh, yeah. right. At any time. Right. We're mortal. We're finite. But God, through Christ, has the completion. Yeah. He has the answer. Oh, he has the ticket. That old song, I've got my ticket and I'm ready to ride. That old train. You remember that song? He's got the answer. And he looked to the stretch of ruler. And he asked him a question. Yeah. He says, why... Do you call me good? But why, why do you call me good? There's no one good but God. Now listen. If you think the Lord is all about, you know, woo, it's all strange stuff. No, God is a God of reason. He's a God of order. He's a God of divine power and sets things in motion. And so he's reasoning with this reasoner. See, this is a lawyer. He understands reason. And so he, he turns the old courtroom right back on the lawyer and he says, Why do you call me good? For there's only one good and that's God. You see, Jesus is not rebuking the lawyer. He's coming into his arena and he's asking him, in effect, Do you believe what? Yes. That I'm God. You see, he's trying to, you've called me good already. There's only one that's good, and that's God. So do you believe that I am God? Now, the young man, he already realizes Christ's goodness. But Christ is leading him now, not just to see the goodness, not just to taste and see that the Lord is good, but to crown him as the Lord of his life and the leader of his life. Okay. And this is instrumental, can I tell you? Every person in the house, young and old, the Bible says, He that cometh to God, Hebrews 11, 6, He that cometh to God must believe, right. I know what I believe, must believe that He is. I love how it stops there, Pastor. He just said, must believe that He is. 
that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Why? Why is he a rewarder? Because he's good. God is good. And that he, if we believe him and we believe he's God and we believe he's good, that he rewards them who diligently seek him. This man is diligent. He's come earnest. He's come in the middle of the day. He's not hiding behind a doorway at night like Nicodemus. He's out right in the broad daylight. He's kneeling on his face before God. He's earnest. He's diligent. And the Bible, God says, hey man, if you believe in me, I'll reward you. Yes. I'm ready to give it all to you. I'm ready to move heaven and earth. I'm ready to go to the cross for you. But God, we saying that just a little while ago. He went to the cross. He know the Bible says Jesus set his face like a flint to go to Jerusalem. Why? Because there's a great party in Jerusalem, big banquet in his honor, big coronation. No, he was going to Jerusalem to die as the eternal Lamb of God on the cross so that you and I might have eternal life everlasting. Jesus is God. The Bible says, In Him was vested all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He yes. is the divine I Am yes. that sent you. He is, the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same in the beginning was with God. There's nothing made that was not made by His hand, for all things consist by Him. Hallelujah. Yes. He is God. He yes. is He is God. Come in the flesh. He is the God-man. He, he came and we beheld Him. Glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus said, If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. My God, in Him that I live and move and have my being. Why? Because He is God. Yes, there's none like Him. He is, he is our all sufficient Savior. And He says, over in, in Matthew's Gospel, it says that the young man said, Then what must I do? That's what we're all in. What, tell me what to do. What can I do? What's, what's the bottom line? What's the minimum requirement? How many songs do I have to sing? How many dollars do I have to give? How many prayers do I have to pray? How many services do I have to attend? What do I have to do to make this thing work? That, that's where our men, minds are. You see, because we're fine. That, that's how we operate. Just tell me the bottom line. How much is it going to cost me? What, what must I do? Okay, so Jesus understands what he's getting to. He, he understands again his reason. You see, he's talking to the lawyer. Yeah. And so he flashes on this young man the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments. Oh, yeah, Moses, the Ten Commandments, we still believe in them. Uh, we still appreciate them. We still believe that they're the Word of God, truth, full of knowledge. We, we believe in the Ten Commandments. Anybody believe in the Ten Commandments? Say amen. amen. Jesus came to fulfill those Ten Commandments. He came to fulfill the law, yes, right. not to destroy it. And so the man, obviously, this young ruler, he's well, obviously well taught, brought up in the Jewish synagogue. He, he knows it all. He, he's followed the creed. And he says there in verse 20, he said, all these things I've done since I was a young person. My God, I get so turned on when I see young people worshiping. I get just, oh, I get excited when I see my kids, my own kids, raising their hands and worship. I just want to, whoo, jump up inside. Jump up and down inside, not just jump inside. That's kind of difficult. <laughs> he said, all these things have I kept since I was a young person, since my youth. Now, he's in the presence. He's in, he, he's in the presence of God. And what he's saying is, I've got the peace of a good conscience. You know, I'm, I'm not killing anybody. I'm not doing drugs. I'm not robbing anybody. Um, I, I, I feel okay. There's a lot of people like that. Good moral people. I talked to a pastor just yesterday about his childhood growing up. He said, my, my family are good moral people. They, 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 they're moral people. They're good. But they don't know Jesus. And so there are many people, and maybe even here today, young person, maybe it's you, maybe it's you, mom or dad, grandmother, that we're sitting in the pew and we attend every week. We may even just in the song service. We pay our tithe. And it just kind of soothes our conscience. We, we, we can leave here going, okay, you know, again, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not stealing from anybody. I'm not cheating on my taxes. I'm not, 
you know, I'm, I'm pretty good. You know what the Bible, he tells us that we measure ourselves by ourselves. I look at this guy here and boy, he's just messed his life up with drugs. And I think, well, no, I'm not that bad. Right? You know what we say? Come on. And we measure ourselves by each other. And we think, can I tell you, God doesn't, he doesn't even look at you compared to anybody else. That's right. He doesn't look, he knows you're a sinner. Yes. He knows you need to be bought with a price, the precious blood right. of Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. He looks at us. We may be crippled. We may be blind. You sang a minute ago. We might be blind. We might be crippled. We might be broke. But our greatest need is Jesus. Yes. Amen. I mean, in Matthew 5, when they let down the man in the roof, and there he was crippled. He needed a healing in his legs, yeah. obviously. That's what we think. But Jesus saw the crippled man laying there. He didn't say one word about his legs. He said, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. That's what the problem is. That's what the go back. I can go through life without a leg. I can go through life without an eye. I can go through life without an arm. The Bible says don't be afraid of going, of going through life without an arm or an eye, but instead be afraid of going to hell with all your limbs. That's right. Be afraid of going to hell with your eyesight. I'm way off. I'm way off. <laughs> we soothe our conscience by what we think we're doing. And that's what this young man said. He said, I, I, I've kept all the Ten Commandments. Can't you see me? He's starting to feel good. He's getting that swag. He's getting that, you know, he's getting ready to get back in his beamer. He's feeling good about this thing. <laughs> and he says, so what do I lack yet? Well, can't you kind of hear him? I, I, I can see it just a little bit. So what do I lack yet? <laughs> Standing there in all of his self-importance and all of his... You know, he was needling a minute ago, but now he's feeling better about this thing. What, what do I like yet? Listen, his heart is set on filling the void. His heart is set on missing, finding the missing piece and the missing link. He was convicted. He is convicted. The Holy Ghost is all over him. The Holy Ghost has convicted him of his righteousness, of his unrighteousness, of judgment, of his sin. That's what Jesus said. The Holy Ghost will come. I will send the Spirit of God, and when he comes, he will convict this world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And so he's feeling this conviction. There was, there was more to what's going on than what he's experiencing. God, help us to respond to the Holy Spirit's voice. Say, Hear me. I feel this so strongly. I may be talking to a house full of God-fearing Christians, but there may be somebody here that the Holy Ghost is saying, listen to me and listen to the message that I have for you and not be convicted, but be converted. Amen. I've got to hurry on Christ. Verse 21. It says in the NI, in the King James Version, it says, and then Jesus beholding him Loved him. Boy, here again, I'm looking at my watch and it says 10 after 11, we're in good shape. <laughs> Don't even tell me what it really is. <laughs> this is a heart melting voice. If you don't hear anything else I say today, if you're ready to go eat, listen to this. The Bible says, and Jesus beholding him loved him. Now this is not a superficial glance. This isn't just a quick handshake when you come in the door, hey brother, how you doing? And it's not just a friendly smile here. It's not just a, a, a look, but it is a divine, compassionate, all-inclusive, soul-searching look into the heart of this man. And in one brief instant, God of glory, Jesus Christ, knows everything about him. Every word that has ever come out of his mouth, he knows it. Every thought he's ever had, he knows it. Every lust he's ever had in his heart, he sees it. Every ill-spoken word, every judgment that's been gotten unfairly, everything in this man's life, the Lord in that moment beholds him and sees everything in his life. And the word says, he saw it all, Holly. And look.
and beholding him. That's the cold. And beholding him. That's how he looks at you. That's how he looks at us. He looks at us. He, he sees everything that we are and everything that we are not. He sees the good, the bad, and the ugly. The bottom line is he sees it all and loves you. Here we church of God at Abundant Love. If there's anything we need to know, we need to know. Ephesians 5, 1 says, As children of God, be imitators of God, and walk as dear children, living a life of love.